So we're doing breakfast. Um, you just want to get away from the news for two seconds. So right here I have these red clover sprouts and I have some tabbouleh salad. If you can see this, tabbouleh salad and um, what do you call it? Uh, Breadsmith bread, tabbouleh salad, garlic that I froze and onions. So let me get the egg that's going to add to this. Oh, and I should mention the spice house. They make uh, fresh ground spices and they're really, really quality, quality ground spices here. So let me get the egg. I'm going to throw a fried egg on top of all this. Excuse me. It's a bit overdone, but you know, life goes on, right? I would prefer it a little bit. Uh, what's what I'm looking for? Not runny. Runny's not really the word I want. Oh, and uh, this is from Aldi's. Relatively cheap, you know, a few bucks at most. <clears throat> I got her egg. I broke the lid on this, so I have to pinch it out with my fingers. Nobody else lives here, so it's just me. And this is a... Um, like a smoked salt kind of a thing. Kind of has a reminiscent smell of burnt wood, which is actually kind of comforting in a way. Let me put her sprouts on there. And these are really, you got these from Whole Foods yesterday because apparently that's the only place you can get them now. And they're really, uh, they're really beautiful. These are really some beautiful sprouts. There's not, sometimes you get them where they're a little gray or a little slimy or whatever. And you know, on the bottom or towards the middle or whatever. And these are perfectly, perfectly dry. Just the way they should be. Throw the onions on there. Oh, we could get pepper. I got pepper. <clears throat> so I would recommend if you were looking for a way to uh, stretch your food, your food dollars and all that, in terms of uh, you know you want to if you eat eggs you can get you can get a lot of meals out of some eggs. <laughs> this is pepper, also from all these. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is Milwaukee Iron Seasoning. So it does have a little bit of a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, that's what I'm looking for. It does have a little bit of a cayenne, you know, that hot pepper type of taste. There's really nothing in here. Let's see if I can scrape something out. My finger's not long enough. Isn't that pathetic? In with the knife. Because it's fresh ground. Ooh, that's good. Because it's fresh ground, sometimes it can be a little uncooperative. They have really um, high quality, high quality ingredients there, and it's on over on Wells and uh, North Avenue or whatever that is over there. But you can order online. It's thespicehouse.com, and I don't get anything from them. I mean, I know know them in passing, and you know the people that work there and stuff, but I don't get anything from them. They have fresh cayenne pepper if you like that. Um, Dill dip is my favorite dressing. The, uh, this is the label for it because, like I said, I broke the I broke the the jar for this, and then um, the, um, the little sifter thing on the top that was you know with the big holes. So that's not going to work for this this uh, powdery stuff. So yeah, I think you you can get a lot of uh, mileage mileage is the word I was looking for out of you know a dozen eggs, and they're healthy for you, and they keep. You know, you don't need to run out and buy eggs every 30 seconds. And the bread can be frozen. And the butter, real butter, can be frozen. If you're a vegetarian, you can use, um, you've had fairly good luck with, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, the vegan butter. I've had different brands. It's white. You can go half and half if you have, like, allergies or, you know, you get a little too much stuff going on in your sinuses and your throat from regular butter. Eggs are not dairy, by the way, because they don't come off a chicken. Susan is right here. <laughs> Let's see if I can show you Susan. Let me clean my hands off here. There's Susan. <laughs> there she is. She's wagging. And yes, it's uh, due to the uh, due to the virus. You know, the maid is taken off, so. <laughs> I got stuff all over the place, but that's just that's just me. I got a lot of hobbies, and so I put stuff down, and 
you know, it's clean, clean enough. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have it, so I don't have the virus, so I must be doing something right. Hmm. Susan's looking for eggs, a little piece of egg. And then here comes our other snack. Oh, here he is. <laughs> He's a Maltese C. Yeah, so there's always dogs around here, Humphrey. And Colby. There's Colby. <laughs> she likes eggs, too. Because they have to have something to do. Because they get bored. I don't know, Summer's around here. So there she is. She's behind us. She's a white golden retriever puppy. She's back there somewhere. Oh my god, this is good. Like I said, onions keep, they keep for quite a while. Um, I guess you could always cook them and freeze them. That's another option. You can freeze butter, butter can be frozen. I, I know this from a food scientist that told me that. Um, you can't freeze things like, like cream cheese, any soft cheese. But you could freeze blocks of cheese, you know, if they're already wrapped up. Mm -hmm. Usually what I do is I sit here in my, my little stool here and I watch one of those little portable Blu-ray players. They're back now. I don't know if you're aware of this. Because I like that, you know, if you want to go sit outside or, you know, whatever, go in the bath bathtub, you can just take the thing with you and if something horrible happens to it, you know, you drop it or whatever. I mean, it's not an ideal situation. But, um... You know, it's relatively cheap. I think I got this one for from Best Buy for, I don't know, $200 or whatever it was. Because I was just really happy that Blu-rays are back for whatever that's worth. Even though I have a perfectly good television set. <laughs> it goes back there. I just like the portability of it. And then you plug in, you know, your headphones. And if you're only a foot away from the screen, it's not like you can really tell the difference between that and an 80-inch screen, really. <laughs> yes, the resolution is going to be a little better. But me, personally, it's not that I'm a, it's not that I'm not a fan of resolution in terms of screen screens. But I'm really more interested in sound. Something that has bad sound, like a lot of stuff on YouTube, for example, I have a hard time. I have a hard time listening to. God, this is a good sandwich. Strange how life can change so quick. You know, a few weeks ago. We were just off going to work. It's like, I don't know, 9.30ish or something. 9.30? Let's see what happened to my tea here. Oh, God, it's 10 o'clock. 10.01. And we'd be, today's what, Friday? So I'd be at school or on the way to school, on the train, with all the sneezing, coughing, hacking, tuberculosis, you know, on the Tuberculosis Express, also known as the, as the train system. <coughs> That's asthma. Don't freak out. Um, and probably some allergies, because I go through a lot of Kleenex. But at any rate, and I'd be on my way to school, or I'd be at school now, actually, you know, for group piano. And the whole thing had a monkey wrench thrown into it, you know, in a week or two weeks. Me, personally, I was a little freaked out when I saw the thing in China. Um, you know, the news coverage and 
people getting sick and all that, people dying. And I was thinking then, it's only a matter of time before it gets over here. <laughs> and I was right. Oh, one of the things I've been doing, this is a deal. If you have to go to uh, Whole Foods anyway, this is a really nice deal on little cards. These are made in America, right? Let's see. Eco-friendly, made in the USA, and sustainable. So they're made with wind power, paper. They're printed using 100% solar power and 20% less waste than conventional printing, and they're also $2.99. So here's one of the cards that I saw at the checkout counter. It says, sometimes good things fall apart, so better things can fall together. By Marilyn Monroe. And then the inside is blank. I'm not really crazy about these plastic things because they kind of, <laughs> the little plastic covers sort of defeat the purpose of, of being, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, ecologically friendly. I would have bought them at the other, the other Whole Foods where I walk to But they didn't have, they don't have my bread. And I wanted a couple loaves of bread. Kind of stupid in a way. Because I went to, you know, to get a few things. I wanted my tabbouleh salad, because otherwise I gotta walk to another Whole Foods. Then I wanted some bread, and then maybe, you know, one or two other things. No big deal, and I wasn't planning on spending a lot of money. I get down there. I had to drive. I mean, I could walk, but it's going to take a while. You get down there, and there are empty shelves. <laughs> now, in the country where I live, we don't have empty shelves, okay? There's no empty shelves. It's a big store. I mean, parking lots are, you know, large parking lots or large parking garages are smaller than the store. And there were actually empty shelves. I mean, it wasn't panic buying material, but there were empty shelves. Like, the, you know, the bread. Where's the bread, and where's the... You know, the rice and gone. So that makes me a little nervous. Garlic. Kills everything. <laughs> makes you a little nervous. You know? So a lot of the people that shop at Whole Foods now, and there goes the nose again, they weren't even around for 9-11. So they don't even remember, you know, being in the middle of New York or seeing pictures of downtown Chicago or whatever in rush hour or at noon and it's completely empty. I've got pictures of it. It's one of those deals where, you know, if you weren't sitting there right there looking at it, you wouldn't believe it. But, you know, business went down and stuff slowed down and people quit going out for a while and stuff like that. You know, definitely put a hit on things. Well, it was very temporary if you weren't in the middle of New York, of course, <coughs> where the impact was. If this has been a little bit more like the tsunami wave to get an earthquake under the ocean causes a wave as it gets to the shore and the wave gets bigger and bigger and bigger. At first, all the water gets sucked out because the wave is coming. And the water gets sucked out before the wave gets there. So this is all dry, all this stuff that's never dry. Now, of course, any of the natives with any sense who have experience with this or have their ancestors have experience with this will tell you to stay out of that spot that's dry that's not supposed to be. Because it ain't low tide, it's tidal wave, okay? They used to call it tidal wave. Now they're calling it tsunami. But there's always some, some, you know, somebody that doesn't know any better. Okay, I'll just put it that way. <laughs> and they have to go check it out. And here comes the water. You know, it's a little water, it's a little water, it's a little more water. Next thing you know, they're gone. And it was hundreds of thousands of people that died.
But this 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 event with the virus has been a little bit more like uh, you know the water went away where it wasn't supposed to. And then here comes the wave. And the water, of course, has to, some of the water has to come in just this way. And that's what it's been like so far. I mean, they're closing libraries. They're closing the library on Monday. Apparently some guy went into a, uh, not even going to the library because they're closed on Sunday. It's in the same building with the university. <coughs> And he went in the elevator, this would have been Sunday, and went upstairs and did what he was going to do in the DePaul plane with somebody else that had the virus. And it caused a big to-do. Now, don't take this personally, but a lot of people that are, that are you know, cleaners and whatnot do not clean the way that I do. <laughs> so if I've ever cleaned for anybody else, and I have, believe me, you could eat off of it if you really wanted to. So, you know, like if I were cleaning a bathroom or something, well, the part where people splash water on the walls and soap on the walls and whatever, you know, all that, that whole area by the sink and the toilet and the, that's all got to be scrubbed down. You can't just, you can't just go past it or, you know, the, the bottom of the toilet gets dirty too. You can't just ignore it. <coughs> Ew. So, it's just been a little, um. I just get a little concerned because you know how people clean that are not me. <laughs> now, I'm obviously not Martha Stewart. Sorry, Martha. But um, I manage, you know. And up till now, as long as I stay away from other people, I haven't been sick. I only get sick. I'll tell you what, in college, they ding you really bad if you don't show up. You get like two absences a semester. Now, if you have a flu or something like that, a week, not going to be enough. Two days are not going to be enough. Sorry. That's half a week, right? So most classes are once a week or twice a week. It's just not going to be enough. So they, so all these students, you know, most of whom are younger, but not all. There's a few of them that are, you know, over 40. And they all feel compelled to show up sick. Because there's no, really no other option. They will ding you pretty badly. You show up, you don't show up enough times, you'll lose grade points. I mean, it's bad. So hopefully, the virus is going to change all that. Because you have to think about... Um, you know, people that you do business with. Right now, that Amazon guy also owns Whole Foods. Had the audacity to ask that his workers, his workers donate their, their, I believe it was unpaid sick days, or vacation days, unpaid also, if I'm not mistaken, to their other employees. Isn't he like the richest man in the world? <laughs> Can't he afford to give his employees sick days? So that mentality forces people to show up sick. If you're working around people or you're working around food, guess what's going to happen? People are going to get sick. And I'm surprised he hasn't been sued for that already because it's just asking for trouble. It's also very selfish. So you have to look into that. I think all these in Trader Joe's are better about that, but obviously they're not perfect. So people have to show up sick because they don't have a choice. They're not getting paid. They don't show up. That's untenable. Now, if this is a situation where that's what that's the deal and you go into it that way, um, I don't think a virus, a major epidemic, in this case a pandemic, because it's worldwide, should qualify for that. <coughs> Because if you're afraid or you have home obligations with your kids because your kids are home or you have other relatives that shouldn't be exposed to whatever you're getting at work, um, you should be able to stay home and they should pay you for that. That's only fair, especially if they're multimillionaires or multi-billionaires and you're not. 
it's just really uh it's just really not good so we've got the last little bit here So you know, these guys that own these places are going to be, um, they're going to get money back. I'm sure they are, like they always do, from the government about their business loss. And according to my math, they're going to keep that money for themselves. I'm not going to give it to you. So you have to reassess. I mean, if you stay in the blaming part. Nothing's going to get fixed. But you may want to say, well, I want to go back to school or, um, you know, look into the trades because trades are short as far as it goes. Relatively inexpensive. You can do it at a city college. And it pays off pretty quick. For example, um, if you want, <laughs> you want to be an electrician, there's a lot of reading involved in that, but if you wanted to be an electrician, that's a possibility. Plumbing, that's another one. Um, pipe fitters, truck drivers. There's all these people. You can't outsource these people to another country where it's cheaper because all the people that are doing the job have to be here. Um, auto mechanic is another one. That's not a bad bad living as I understand it. What else? Um, Construction. Construction is particularly dangerous, and you have to be union, trust me on this. Because the people that are hiring you are getting paid for you like $65 an hour. If you're not union, or if you're not in a position to be union, like you're not legally here, you're going to turn around and pay you 15 bucks an hour with no benefits, no sick days, no nothing. And then if you get hurt, it's too bad for you. Well, no. <laughs> and the only way this works, the only way this is going to work historically, is for people to, you know, we have this wonderful social media thing. So use it. I would you know, personally not put my real name up there, not my real image, just because people are not very nice sometimes. But you can do what you need to do. And everybody walks off at the same time. Well, they can't fire all of you. <laughs> and you have to be prepared to stay out. But I'll tell you what, the uh, when people did this in 1912, right, I believe it was right before the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire in New York, the horrible fire where people were locked in to their uh, to their place of work because the owner was you know more con owners plural I believe were more concerned about people stealing than they were about people's safety and of course a garment factory is a is a <laughs> it's just a just a tinderbox in the first place so a fire started and people were um, they were trapped or you know locked in and a lot of people chose to jump from like the ninth floor so for whatever that's worth but. <laughs> See, there goes the there goes the uh, the allergies. But it changed things because Clara Lim Limlick, I believe her name was, she was on the front lines of the unionization, and a bunch of grown men actually beat her up and broke three of her ribs and you know put her out of commission, but only temporarily. And when you didn't go to work in those days, nineteen twelve or so, nineteen eleven. You didn't get paid. You don't get paid. You don't eat. There was no there was no welfare back then. You were just that's just too bad for you. So that was a big risk. But it does mean that you can do it again. And the people that you see on a day to day basis and the people that uh, work with you could easily all man together. We have social media. You don't have to leave the house now and make sure that people know what's really going on. So that you can basically say, well, we're not going to work. I need some more of them sprouts. Those are good. Yes, they possibly could cause food poisoning, but we got we had a big pandemic going on. The least I'm concerned about is a little E. coli. I've been picking up after dogs for 30 years. I'm not that concerned about food poisoning, really. I'm not. I haven't caught anything from a dog. People, people on the other hand, are pretty gross. 
I've never caught anything from a dog in my life, though. And believe me, many bags have had holes in them. I'm going to get my sprouts. But yeah, the only the only option was some sort of union. You have a friend that works in a bar, in a hotel. She makes a good living because she is union. And she says that the union's kind of useless. In terms of, you know, they're telling her to uh, apply for unemployment. It's like, you make 60 grand a year. What do you have to imply, apply for unemployment for? They should pay you. You're not working at McDonald's. And so the union, the union isn't doing anything. Then that doesn't that doesn't help matters. But at any rate, I hope this um, you felt a little better about having some company. You know, seeing as everybody's alone, and then I hope hopefully I did or said something that maybe will be useful or change the world. Oh, the other thing I've been doing I forgot to mention about these cards. So I got a bunch of airmail card uh, stamps from the post office. You know, my last foray out there. And they've been sending one of these cards um, to Italy at this point. So I send, try to send one every day. I've been sending one every day, just, you know, I try to keep things a little bit upbeat. What's going on, you know, in this part of the world. And, you know, sending hope and all that, I hope, anyway. Who knows? And maybe, uh, maybe I'll hear something back from email or something. But that's one way to do it. I mean, I guess you could send something a little bit more local. If you have some uh, materials... <laughs> You know, masks and all that. If you're home, you don't need a freaking N95 mask, okay? I'm going to say that right now. So maybe look into um, sending some stuff from the post office and sending them to a doctor or a nurse that could actually use them. Because if you're in a house, you don't need them. <laughs> if you're outside, you also don't need them, unless you're packed in there with thousands of other people. But on the whole, no, you don't. But at any rate, that's breakfast for today, so... I hope something was usefully done. Look at how cute they are. <laughs> oh, God, my nose. Yeah, see, it only happens when I'm eating. I'm probably eating something, something I'm allergic to. And that's pretty much everything, so life goes on. I would imagine, I guess it's the bread. As soon as I didn't eat anything else. But... If you care to join me, maybe tomorrow or later, I'll come up with something else that we can eat together.